Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. This is part six of the Sony KV1942R. In the previous video, we uh, worked the video on IF board, which is uh, this guy right here. We still need to reinstall him and see what else needs to be done. Now, as far as the rest of the set, I have yet to resolder the neck board, which looks atrocious. I thought about yanking the remote control board, which is this guy right here. Uh, <clears throat> I went over it briefly with my cap checker, and just about all the caps on here test good. I don't have a remote control for this. I don't really intend on getting a remote for this because, you know, analog TV's dead, and I'm just going to use this to feed a signal directly to it. So. What we are going to do again is reinstall the IF board, which goes there. Do some resoldering on the neck board. I do need to get in here and get the uh, control board out that has all the pots and switches and stuff on it. Those all need to be cleaned. They're super messy. And surprisingly, just going over this board, the remote board here, the soldering on this looks decent. We're going to tap and wrap on it and make sure that nothing is uh, bad. I mean, there's a couple spots. But really, uh, I think I'm just going to leave the remote control board alone unless it starts having some sort of issue related to that. I'm not really going to mess with it. I really just want to get into using this set at this point. So let's go ahead and uh, get the IF board back in and give it a test run. So somebody pointed out that in the previous video, C316 was not changed. Yep, I missed one. Uh, so that did get changed out. I just swapped it. Uh, so that's been taken care of. One cap probably wouldn't have meant a damn difference, but uh, it's better to be thorough than not be thorough. Of course, now saying that, I should probably yank the control board up here, but I don't know. I'm just not going to be using it, so whatever. Anyways... Let's get the uh, board in here. And for all who are curious, the uh, C316 was a 1 microfarad, 50 volt. So this cable goes back around to the power supply board, which I'll have to feed through. Let's get the board mounted first. That way it's not sliding around while I'm putting stuff back together. And let's see here. This is A8 which is this guy here. Here's your IF input there. A3. Helps to have it in the right orientation. A1, which is over here. A2. Which is up here, and a seven, which is your tone slash volume control. Though I only have a volume control on this, I don't have a tone control, so that's kind of weird to me. Although many TVs, many higher end TVs, had a tone control on them. Because before MTS and stereo broadcast, it was important to have decent fidelity on a television, especially if you were watching like a variety show or something. Okay. Just double check everything here. I think we're all plugged in. Let's reconnect that power supply connector on the other board. 
This thing is almost too big for my service bench. And that connector actually goes over to the IF board here. Certainly is a pain to get in there. Okay. So that's in. While I'm at it, since we're back here, let's uh, focus on resoldering this neck board. Let's see if I can orient the light in a better position. I don't think so, though. The lighting in this area of the store just sucks. And of course the thing's going to want to defocus and not do what I want it to. The neck board is a place of contention on many CRT sets. They love to get bad solders and cause all sorts of flickering and problems and whatnot. So we're going to go ahead and resolder this. This one has a lot of flux on the board. That's that kind of tan colored goop. It's supposed to help the solder run off. Now there was somebody on one of the previous videos who I guess was a, a tech for Sony, <laughs> did a lot of these turnitrons, and he was talking about a special setup procedure to do the grayscale and drives using a scope, like you're supposed to monitor the, the CRT while you're adjusting the, the drive and stuff. So I'll have to see if the SAMS has anything about that. I've never heard of doing that, but that doesn't mean it's not supposed to be done and I would tend to trust somebody more in the field that had done it than what is or isn't published because if you were an authorized servicer oftentimes the company told you things that the general service community did not know unless you were part of a a trade uh, a trade group like Nesda I personally am not associated with Nesda. My uh, the guy I worked for, Fred, was for many years. I don't know if he still is or not. But before the internet, you had trade associations, a network of people specializing in a field. And if you needed the help with something, you'd call somebody up in the trade association. Maybe they knew something that somebody else didn't. Also usually gave you access, to, better access to parts and manufacturer's resources. Given the proximity of some of these we're definitely going to be scraping between the leads. Because the last thing you want is something to arc over on the neck board and damage an FET or a transistor or apply a voltage to the gun that shouldn't be there. That's when bad stuff happens.
this G1 here was a little crusty. If you lose your control grid, all sorts of weird stuff starts happening. Flickering, flashing, retrace lines. Almost done. Not sure if I like that one. Let's uh, try this one again. There we go, that's better. There's a capacitor on this neck board. I haven't even pulled it off to look at the other side yet. We gotta see if there's anything here that was should be changed out as a precaution. Okay. Let's go ahead and scrape between the tight spots here. I know some of these probably don't matter because they are a, a shared trace. But it's a matter of practice, it's a good idea. You can see the little bits of flux and stuff that break off. And sometimes, if you're really lucky, there's little solder flakes in there. I know there'll be somebody out there that says that I'm like horribly and irreparably damaging the board. Keep an eye on that trace. That one looked like it got a little hot. There's a big fat dropping resistor there. <clears throat> Let's see what's on the other side of the neck board. Yeah, we got one capacitor this uh, electrolytic here. These are spark gaps, I believe. Dropping resistors, dynamic focus, and regular focus. No, that's the drive. Okay, so I guess this is dynamic focus. All right. I just realized that nobody can see a damn thing here. So let's zoom out. Let's see, let's hold this up. Okay, so this is the one cap that's on the board. These things look like spark caps to me, I could be wrong. Driver transistors for the CRT, dropping resistors for the uh, cathodes, I think. This kit is cathode driven. There's a neon lamp here. These are usually used to regulate voltage of some kind, uh, although this might have a different purpose. So, let me see if I have that. It's a 4.7, 250 volt. Let me see if I have one of those, and we'll just kind of swap it out. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is I have two tens at 160, so we're just going to put them in series. That'll make for five microfarads at 320 volts, which is close enough. So let me just uh, undo this nice soldering I just did here and take this capacitor out. Reset the damn camera. And it's going to sh shake and make everyone sick here for a moment. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to yank this out from the back. Negative goes towards the floor. Just pull this away here. Stick this in here. Okie dokie. And we'll put this back on. a new fresh part in there on the neck board. Okay. So I think we're good with that for now. Let's move on to uh, taking the control board out. So back there is the control board which contains your, you know, hue, brightness, picture, AFT, on and off, etc. And I'm not sure how easy this is going to be to get out. I'm hoping it is. So we're going to pop the screws out. And hopefully I don't have to take off all the knobs too, but we'll see. And everything's going to shimmy and shake for a little bit. Because I've got the camera mount fully extended so you know physics um, let's see and then we've got two screws here it looks like And of course this is the one that's going to strip since it's the last screw that gets the thing out supposedly. Yeah, come on out. Time to remagnetize that screwdriver. So let's uh, give a push and a tug. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm going to have to yank all the knobs too, but maybe if I just give it a little tug. No, it's not going to cooperate. Let's look at the front and see what else I have to do to get this apart. Yeah, it's looking like we just got to yankee all the knobs. Of course... That's going to be an interesting feat given the amount of available space. Yeah, let's see if any of them. That one came off half moon shaped. Man. Now well, we got something else to reattach. <laughs> Come on, come on out. A 
It might be just be stuck on there because of age. It might be stuck on there because there was glue. Let's slip something underneath here so I don't wreck the finish. That one's really on there. There we go. Yeah, that was almost like glue. Okay. So the knobs are off. Let's flip this thing back around and see if I can't get that board out. Okay, let's see if the board wants to come out or if it wants to fight me some more. Let me just undo some wiring harness clips here at the bottom in case we need to yank on these a little come on okay there's the power connector here. Starting to come loose. Let's see where this goes. This is M7. Let's disconnect this. This is our control board. Gotta untangle the mess a little bit to get the board out. And then we've got Luma Sponder, which I don't think worked anyways. Okay. That gives us a little more leeway. Come on out. Let's see, what is this plugging at? Can't find it. Where is it? Oh, it's under soldered in there under that shield. Blah. All right. Let's see if we can show you the better view here. So there's the uh, all the control pots and switches. So we're going to give these a little jet of deoxid. And then these two purple Matsushita capacitors can go for sure. I don't much care for those. They love to leak everywhere. In fact, once we're done cleaning these, I'll show you one that's obviously peed already. Let's see. Let's clean these switches. working back and forth a bit. It might help if I just use one of the knobs here to turn them since it's kind of tight. Yes, no. Anybody? Apparently not. It's probably easier to work them all once they've been reinstalled. Yeah, for sure. Those ones down there too. That's your power button. Your volume up and down. Okay. So, we've got two caps here. 
One's a 33 microfarad at 35 volts. I have a 50 volt one and I'll stick in there. I know it's a crime against nature, God, and humanity to not use the exact value voltage. And then we get 100 at 35 here. That'll come out. But uh, these purple things are evil. I'll show you when I pull them out what they look like. So right now it's easier for me to just pull the capacitors out the way this board is oriented. Oh, look, there's more hiding underneath there. There's ones you can't see that are under this plate. If I swing the camera around, you can see one in here. There's another one behind it. Those are both 47 microfarad. But right now I'm just going to focus on getting these two out and then we'll do the other two. So I'm just going to come underneath here. Let's do this 33 microfarad. Come on. And these all buffer voltage for uh, various controls. Like this one that I'm desoldering, this 33 microfarad, buffers the voltage to the hue control. <clears throat> so if that starts getting leaky or cattywampus, then your colors are going to shift. Oh, you can smell the fishy electrolytic. Let me just yank this out here. And I'll show you what's up with these. So they pee electrolyte. Uh, you can see that green fuzz on there. They just they kill things. So I do not like to leave those be. Those go away. Let me get the new one situated so I can stick it in here. solder that from the bottom side I'll trim the excess lead off all right next is the 100 microfarad jobber. This one's all sorts of fun because it's got wires and things in the way. Soldering upside down is uh, different. I don't often have to do that. Okay, let's yank this one out. Come on, there we go. This one uh, hasn't started to die yet. See if it will focus. Yeah, apparently not. Not dead yet. It is two hours before we open to the public. I wonder if the phone calls will start coming in really soon. Okay, let me solder that guy in. Try not to destroy all of the insulation of the wiring adjacent to it. Okay. So that's capacitor number two.
All right, so. Let's see if I can move this so you can see the other ones. So those are the two right there. Those guys, they're both starting to piss electrolyte. I can see the fuzzy green stuff on the leads coming out of them. Let's see, that one there is a 47. They're both 47s, 35 volt caps. There's another one where the leads are going to get in the way. This one doesn't want to cooperate with me. Let's see if I can heat up that lead and bust it loose enough. There we go. Okay, let's yank this guy out. This one's pretty crusty. You can see the funk there. Yeah, that's just lovely. Get some of that off the board. And this one's got a little dot where the negative was, so I'm not worried about that. Let's go ahead and yank this last one out back here. More wires in the way. Usually what happens is the electrolyte, if it gets down the lead enough, will mess up the solder composition, so desoldering it becomes really hard. At worst, they actually, actually leach the electrolyte into the board, which causes all sorts of issues too with leakage paths and stuff. What really sucks is that if you own a Technics, or a Panasonic piece of equipment made between about 1970. See, that one's kind of crusty too. 1970 to about 1985, you're going to see caps like this. They came in different shades. There were the light purple ones. There were the dark purple ones that were kind of bluish. But they all die regardless. It's not a question of if, it's just when. Okie dokie. So let's stick our new ones in. Since I have limited space, I'm bending the leads at an angle to help me get it in there easier. Like so. And then, I'm trying to squeeze this one in here. Come on. Oh, male guys here. Male guys, at least fairly timely here. You can usually expect them just before 9 o'clock. He's pretty well on time today. Let me go ahead and solder these caps in. He needs to get his truck service though, that thing idles way too high. But somehow I don't think the post office is concerned with how their vehicles run because most of them sound like they're about to fly apart any minute. Okay. Clippy there. Clippy there. Traffic's really starting to kick up. Okay. So let's see, 
no more hiding capacitors that I can see here yeah so it's time to put this guy back in its holster and then we need to get the uh, board back up in here secure it put all the knobs back on This is the fun part because there's wires and things that want to hang in places that I can't have them hang if I'm going to put this back. Let's see. All right, so you're all right. You're gonna hide up there. Let me open the control door here and see what I'm doing. seated at least Let's see if we can zoom out a little bit here All right, last screw goes up top. Yeah, let's start hooking things back up. to do here really okay Guess these can get locked back together all right the boards in there let's put the knobs and stuff back on okay Put some knobs back on. I already worked these uh, bottom switches I couldn't get to to clean them up a little bit. Okay, turn the remote off, Lumus Ponder off, AFT on, automatic off. Okay, now let's see if after all this it actually works. Okay, let's see if it flies or if it fries. Wow. You look terrific, Arnold. Don't forget he's Arthur. Yeah. Okay, um, are you okay on those stumps? Yeah, this is what they mean by getting high. I don't want to be no part of them. All right. Do some uh, quick picture tweaks here. You get the door, I'll hold them up. Okay. I hope Daddy doesn't find out about this one. Oh, hi, Mr. Sutton. Hello. Okay. We'll get out of the way here. Well, yes, you know Willis and this is my 15-year-old 
50 grand and get, get some. Un toque, entonces lo que vamos a hacer es untar los pancitos. Además, estamos poniendo todo súper casero, saludable. Los chicos aman, de hecho, Minera se acaba de llevar el colegio. Y, a, y adentro le vamos a poner más que. Camera really doesn't do it Looks awfully nice, even without the setups done yet. We have to get to that next. Let's see here. Looks pretty decent. Nice sharp picture. Let's see if we can uh, tweak the focus a little bit with a menu option. really is pretty good as is we got a little bit of pin cushion issues but that'll all clear up once we do the setup adjustments on this got a little bit of yoke tilt too but the recap uh, I think it improved video and color response a little bit a little bit I don't think it was significant enough to warrant doing this unless you really want to. But the uh, picture looks nice. Very sharp, very detailed, very bright. I had to turn the contrast down almost all the way, otherwise it just causes the, uh, the camera to blank. But yeah, definitely some uh, pincushion issues at hand. But man, that looks nice. It's just sharp and crisp. You can see that fake orange tan. Mmm. Yeah, it's super bright. All right, well, that's going to do it for part six. In part seven, we're actually going to do setup adjustments on this. We're going to fix the tilt problem. We're going to do the grayscale, see if we can touch up the convergence a little bit. Uh, just make it a really nice looking set. And assuming that all goes well, we'll uh, button it back up and uh, enjoy it. So. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, part six. Stay tuned for part seven.